The last year of updates for Star Citizen have been confusing, and it might seem like their system has broken, but there's a good reason for the weirdness surrounding the 3.18 and 3.19 updates. In this video, I'll be explaining why these updates are pretty weird, but not as big a problem as they might appear. This video was released early for supporters as a thanks for making this possible. If you enjoy these videos about the game development of Star Citizen and want them early, consider joining as a YouTube channel member below. For those who already are members, Thank you for supporting my tomato talks. Back in the dark days before 3.0 was released in 2018, Star Citizen was updated based on the content available. This model worked for the company for several years, but became a problem when the content that needed to be released took a year longer than expected to release. This caused what was known as the Great Drought. From the end of 2016 to the beginning of 2018, the game barely changed. And throughout all of that time, players could only look forward to the special 3.0 patch that always felt just a few months away. Sound familiar? The idea of updating the game based on when content was ready led to a lot of waiting back then, just as it has now with 3.18, and how it will likely before 4.0. This is why the update model since 3.0 has changed to a time-based schedule rather than a content-based schedule. If you don't believe that, just look at the last 17 major updates. March, June, November, December. April, July, October, December, April, August, October, December, April, August, November, December, April, and then 3.17 hit. And just like with 2.6 and 3.0, players have been stuck with 3.17 waiting for 3.18 for 10 months at the time of this writing. Things were a bit different this time though, with 3.17.2 offering several noteworthy features and other improvements coming through the year since. But the content-based patch has once again emphasized the slow pace of development at times and has broken down a lot of player confidence in the company's ability to ship an update. So why did 3.18 take so long? Why should we maybe not assume every update from now on will be massively delayed in the same way? And why could 3.19 help get things back on track? A couple of weeks before writing this video, Jared, the head of content production at CIG, gave us a Disco Discuss session on the inner workings of this update process. I'll be paraphrasing what he said, so I'd highly suggest checking it out in the video description below. But what this session explained was the process of developing features, adding them to an update, and then releasing that update. Jared reviewed the different levels of development that occur in the update process, with the main focus on the game dev level, which is the least stable. This game dev level is the place where most of the worst of the worst bugs occur, as each feature team working throws their latest developments in the mix to be implemented. When viewing the progress tracker, you can see these teams and their scheduled work. The EUPU team may have a feature undergoing engineering work. As this engineered work is done, that specific team will pass their work to game dev, which may also pass that work back to these feature stream teams to be iterated on and for feedback to be received. And while game dev is mainly where the feature development teams live, this passing back and forth of features happens at every phase of development. The staging phase, which usually includes more art, locations, and items, and is much more stable. The release phase, which is even more stable and generally closely precedes public patch testing. And the live phase, which is an exact mirror of what players are playing in the public universe. Obviously allowing the company to test and tweak in a live environment without ruining the game for the players. Now while this is happening at each stage of development, the game dev branch is where the most important things occur and what we're going to be looking at for the rest of this video. See, while these teams are checking their work into game dev, the company as a whole has to decide a point at which that branch of development is locked in place, as you can't keep changing the code and adding a bunch of features to a build when you're trying to get it updated to release it. This is called the exclusion and stabilization process, and allows for features to fail or pass a test to be included in that branch, or continue the game dev check-in process for a later update. And this is a key part of staggered development. 
This exclusion process creates a pipeline which double and triple checks each feature as it moves towards the release phase and allows the team to create additional branches or updates, much like 3.4.1, 3.10.2, 3.12.1, or 3.17.3. .3. These patches are meant to allow for additional features, hot fixes, and stabilization to take place without the code base itself changing. During this time, the rest of the company can continue to develop the much larger features that break the update schedule, such as persistent entity streaming, the main function of 3.18, and likely the most significant feature to release in Star Citizen thus far. So now that the idea of how these updates can come to be has been explained, let's talk about how this persistent entity streaming and the patch that it's coming in became such a dilemma for the game. Persistent Entity Streaming, or PES, is one of the most important features in Star Citizen, and it's something the devs have been progressing towards for years. It's a large piece of the puzzle that is Star Citizen as an MMO, and a huge prerequisite of server meshing, which I recently covered on one of my podcasts. PES, to put it simply, will allow for the game to track and store in memory every object that is interacted with anywhere in the Star Citizen universe. Now, at face value, it's pretty impressive. But when you get into the game and visit a spaceship crash site that has been sitting undisturbed for 40 hours with crates of loot, bottles of water, and the dead bodies of the players who were flying the ship, you start to get the possibilities. This technology allows for all ships, clothes, armor, guns, and other entities to be placed, stored, stashed, or stolen with no interruption. Any item can be taken by others and end up anywhere else across four planets, 12 moons, and dozens of space stations, or the entire void of space. A feature like this ties into every single part of the game. And while developers were reporting for months on monthly reports that they were integrating preparatory work into their features for PES, this is still an in-house, custom-built method of persistence that's not too common in games. This meant a lot of testing, experimenting, and delaying of the 318 patch and other gameplay features tied to PES as the team tried to stabilize every feature impacted. So the choice was made to dub the 318 patch the Persistence Patch. 318 would be the launch of Persistent Entity Streaming. Thus, the company would move it to stabilization and exclusion and continue developing other features on the 317 branch of code. This allowed the studio to lock in the requirements for PES without completely stopping other developments, allowing the team to stagger the development and release of features across multiple patches as needed. This also meant the company would need to provide a patch for the next set of features, which wouldn't be named 318 since that was already reserved. That is how we got 3.17.2. In this patch, the company was able to introduce AI abilities to navigate on planets, new missions around derelict outposts and ships, which were also new locations in the update, it led to expanded server sizes to be tested and implemented, and it led to a new dynamic event to be introduced in Orison, with a few other small additions. Meanwhile, PES and the features that depended on it, like Salvage and the new Cargo Refactor, were developed in the 318 branch alongside PES. So when it comes to Star Citizen updates, taking the history of development into consideration, it's clear 3.18 is the exception here, not the rule. It likely will not set the expectations of patches going forward, but it does provide a bit more context for our expectations about these updates. Updates with large features will require the company to release the update based on the content included. In the meantime though, regular sized updates will generally be able to continue being developed and released on a normal time-based schedule. And that brings us to 3.19, which acts as another part of the 3.18 dilemma. Despite all the work being done, the patch is still quite unstable, and CIG feels it's necessary to stay on the 3.18 branch of code and continue stabilizing before branching off for another major update at the end of the year. This approach is similar to what happened with 3.16, which was based on 3.15's code branch, and the 3.17.2 patch we just discussed, which was based on 3.17. With 4.0 giving the company plenty of room to add more patches to the roadmap, we're more likely to see a 3.20 and a 3.21 update in the meantime before the exclusion and stabilization process of 4.0 is done and goes live. 
That being said, with the additional time to stabilize the game in 319, it's likely we won't see a 3.20 patch until the fourth quarter of 2023, which will no doubt be the largest update of the year. Following this, we will likely see a similar situation with 4.0 as we did with 318, before hopefully returning to a more consistent update schedule in the following year. At the end of the day, what matters here are the features being added and developed. Patch numbers can be decided by CIG on a whim. The game being built is the most important thing to pay attention to. Now, I'm no game developer, I do not know how these things should be done, but I appreciate that the update process is a complex one, and formatting it in a way that allows massive features like PES and server meshing to cook in the oven while other features are still being added makes me happy to not be in the days of 3.0 any longer. There are plenty of places CIG can improve this process still, with setting expectations being a big one of them. But changes like the roadmap update of 2022 and the build system we see now have also led to more reliable updates and predictions. Star Citizen's update system isn't broken, but it certainly isn't perfect or set in stone. And while the time-based update model works for the most part besides these outliers, we could see the entire format change after 4.0. There's really no knowing. But if you'd like to keep up to date on how the development of the game is going, you can subscribe to this channel for weekly videos, monthly dev updates, and more. Or you can check out my second channel for podcast reactions and quick info drops. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, all of my supporters receive these videos six months before public release as a thank you for helping us run this channel. If you're interested in joining us for these monthly exclusive videos, behind the scenes looks at our work and other perks, consider becoming a YouTube or Patreon member below. And if you just want to keep watching videos, I hope you learned something new in this one, and I'll catch you in the next.